There are very few cities in the world where you can order lunch in Mandarin, book a taxi in Urdu, ask for an afternoon coffee in Arabic, and spend the evening chatting with your friends in Cantonese. But all of this is done in London. With over 300 languages spoken every day, London is home to a diverse population. But how does language play a role on an individual's life? Hi, my name is Sadaba Haidari, and I want to take you on a journey to explore language and its impact on forming and understanding your culture and identity. I'm originally from Afghanistan. I was born in the capital, Kabul. We moved to London when I was very young, and soon enough, I realized that everyone around me spoke a language that I didn't understand. It didn't take me long to get used to London, make friends and settle down. But then came a constant reminder from my mother that Sodaba, your native language, is very important. You should always maintain reading and writing and you should never forget it. I don't know what my mother's intentions were when she encouraged me to maintain my native tongue, but whatever it was, it has proven advantages. Like Derry helped me learn Arabic, um, it's also a plus point when it comes to employment. As a trainee journalist, is a, it's a huge benefit to be bilingual. My first interviewee is an 11-year-old British-born bilingual girl. Salam. Hello, my name is Jose. I'm 11 years old and I was born in London. H tell me how you managed to learn two languages as a kid. Um, tell me about your experience. Well, at first, I, was, I would speak Dari in my house. But um, yeah, my dad encouraged me to speak dairy in my house. But when I started nursery, I didn't know English. So it was very hard for me to talk to the other kids and to understand what they're saying. This is Egg, sharing an apartment with a bunch of her Malaysian friends. Currently living in London, it can speak several languages. Uh, my name is Egg, I'm Malaysian, and I speak English, Mandarin, and Malay. <laughs> Uh, also a little bit of dialects, okay. um, Cantonese, speak a little bit of Cantonese and Hokkien, but those are just local dialects. So it's it's kind of it's very casual language, like what you used to order food in a restaurant or or speaking to your grandmother stuff like that. But formally English, Mandarin and Malay. W which language did you learn first? First, uh, I think I probably learned Mandarin first. And that's your from native my parents, language. right? That's your native yeah, language. Yeah, technically okay. it is my native language. I probably learned it first from my parents, and then once I got into kindergarten, I learned English and Malay. So basically, if you're Malaysian, from a really really young age, probably four, you learn three different languages at the same time. Is then is that a good thing? Is that an advantage? Uh, yeah, I I would say so. Yeah, it is a really good advantage. Obviously, when you're younger, you don't think it's an advantage because you you have three different languages that you have to speak. But then when you grow up, you start to realize how how good it is for you just the fact that right um mandarin is the number one most widely spoken language in the world i know this for a fact okay. it is the number one most widely spoken language in the world and the second most widely spoken is english so i already have two of them so that's okay. a lot of people that i can communicate with and it it, it comes in very very useful because i spend most of my time outside communicating in english i always have a fear of losing my native language so I've come to Professor Jean-Marc Diwali to find out whether it's possible for an adult to lose their native language and also to find out if it's the same with children. Uh, well, it's one of the big mysteries. Uh, I think the, the brain of a child um, has a lot of capacity, um, but it also has the capacity to wipe away any information that is no longer needed. So um, children who have learned the language um, before the age of 12 and then suddenly stop hearing that language, uh, typically lose all of it. There might be some, some you know, so some words might remain and they may remember the melody of the language, but the language itself can be gone. This is a phenomenon called um, attrition uh, and it typically happened uh, before uh, the phone existed and before traveling was uh, easy, so immigrants moving to a new environment, if they didn't use their first language anymore, would typically lose it uh, up to a point where they would be incapable of having uh, a conversation in that language anymore. And a lot of that was also linked to um, 
emotional things like what did they feel about the la the country they left behind, um, what did do or did they feel about the language itself. Um, and obviously, if you have learned a language at school and you have never used it since, that you you will have forgotten most of that language, or at least you may retain some information about the language, but you may have become in, you know, incapable of, of having conversation in that language. Um, how do you think language helps form your identity? I think just because I'm Chinese, being able to speak Mandarin is very, very, very important to me. Um, I think one of my biggest fears I had when I came here to study was that I would forget how to speak Mandarin. And I feel like if I forget how to speak Mandarin, that would make me less Chinese, if, if that makes sense. Okay. Because um, obviously... In what way? And in just, just in the sense that you know, I'm, I'm Chinese and I can't even speak Mandarin. Um, that's what makes me Chinese, I think, at the most fundamental level. And I think, I think it's, that's true for most other cultures as well. Um, well it, it doesn't mean that, you know, if you are Chinese and you were born here and you can't speak Mandarin, that, that doesn't mean that you're not Chinese. But I think that it really helps to reinforce that identity that you have, to be able to connect with your own culture, being able to speak in the language, being able to communicate. Unlike egg as a could, Jinga thinks language doesn't define your identity. My name is Jinga, I'm from Kurdistan, North Iraq, and I study architecture at Kingston University. Uh, what language do you speak? I speak Kurdish. Um, we have different dialects in Kurdistan, but I speak Sorani. You speak Sorani. Yeah. Um, so, from what I understand, Kurdish, Kurdistan is divided into four parts, which is Iran, Syria, Turkey, and Iraq. Yeah. Do people from those parts all speak the same language? No, um, it's the same language, Kurdish, but it's different dialects. So. If you get someone from Syria, I wouldn't understand what they what they say. So the main language for us might be English, if they speak English. If if I was born here, I think I don't think I would have I would be seen as Malaysian by other actual Malaysians, if you know what I mean. So they would think that you're British or English? Yeah, I think okay. so. I think they would mostly identify me more as British or English instead of being Malaysian, even though I, I have a Malaysian passport or if my nationality is Malaysian. And how does that work when someone mixes up a language? For example, I speak Dari and I speak English and I think I'm native in, native in both. But when I find myself speaking Dari, I add a lot of English words in my Dari. Where, whereas if, I was to, if someone was to ask me to just speak Dari, if I knew that someone couldn't speak English, then I have to think in my mind sometimes certain words I have to change from English to Dari before I can speak it out. Mm. How does that work in the brain? Basically, when, when Malaysians speak to each other, there, there's always like either three or four different languages thrown in at the same time, sometimes even in one sentence. It's pretty normal because I guess you speak Dari mostly with people who also speak English. Yeah. So you have no reason to inhibit your English. So, so you, you have a bilingual code, you code switch between both languages and that works just fine. But so, when I speak English, I don't find myself adding a lot of Dari words, but yeah. when I speak in Dari, I, I find myself adding sure. a lot of English words. Sure, sure, yeah. But, but, but it doesn't mean that you would be unable to stick to a monolingual mode in Dari if you returned uh, to Afghanistan and spoke to someone who didn't know any English but spoke Dari. You know, you might have to think a little bit because you're not used to having to inhibit your English uh, entirely, but, but you would be able to do it. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is that code switching is not a sign of deficiency. Um, the fact that you code switch uh, is in fact more a sign that you are pretty proficient uh, in the two languages and that you are able to switch between them or, or adapt to the linguistic needs of your interlocutor. Do you think it's easier for a child to learn a language than it is for an older person? Yes, um, but there is a lot of debate on that. It's obvious that a child uh, acquiring a language is not making any conscious effort to learn the language. The child is just immersed in, 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 in the language. Um, if you are uh, a little bit older, you learn the language um, probably using different memory systems, uh, typically also sitting in the classroom uh, meaning that you, the, the input you get is not as rich 
as that uh, of a child and, and the number of hours you get of exposure to the language is, is much smaller than what uh, a child or even a multilingual uh, child would get. So, yes. At home I learned Mandarin and then in kindergarten I learned Malay and English. And I think it's just because you, you grow up with it that it doesn't seem weird. How should an individual deal with being stuck in between two cultures? Professor Daiwale thinks it's an advantage. You become a cultural hybrid and I think that you have to accept that you that I have to accept that I will never be perceived as a British person because I'm not. Um, but I'm not entirely a Belgian person anymore either. So, so I'm, I'm a, a, I would say an interesting hybrid, as are most multilinguals, in fact. And in and, and the process, do you kind of lose your identity now that you're in the middle? You don't belong to the British and you don't belong to the Belgians. No, I, I more or less belong to both. Every time I go back after I'm here for like eight or nine months, it takes me a while to get back into being Malaysian, if you know what I mean. Because uh, when, when I'm here, I, I do find that I kind of, kind of tend to lose that malaysian a little bit, especially in terms of language. Um, like I feel more British a little bit, like the way I speak is, becomes a little bit more British and I find that more and more evident the more that I stay here. If I go to a different part of Kurdistan, um, I will not be differentiated just because I'm from um, another part of Kurdistan. In fact, they will support me and because um, as long as you're good. Do you think that language shapes your identity and helps you understand your culture and traditions more? Yeah, the, uh, undoubtedly. Language and culture are, are very strongly linked. So the language, uh, so language uh, is not really that important, so as long as you're good, you connect. You can always find a way to communicate. It might take longer, speak more in detail, but there, there's always someone to, to be able to translate. Or you can always bring another language in to, um, to make that person understand what you're trying to say. Like English? English, or um, because most people speak Arabic, so Arabic could be an option. Um, or Turkish, if they're from Turkey. So what do you think of this interview? I think it was very interesting. If, if, I don't know, the things that she said, her traditional clothing, the language. It's, it's just so fascinating that there are so many parts of Kurdistan and they speak different dialects and they still feel Kurdish. I just think it's, um, it's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to communicate um, with people in different languages.